Hello guys, my name is Remik and in today's video we are going to talk about logging into the database instead of the file approach, console approach, uh, event viewer or the cloud provider because cloud provider will generate for us additional costs that we have to pay. Uh, the file can look actually like this, so we have above for instance, 1 million of the records, and we would like to filter those logs efficiently. So database, if you have already one, then you can use this database, the story log for us will create specific table, and then we can use, for instance, the stored procedures to retrieve the logs from the specific date range, and we'd like to display those logs somewhere or just import somewhere as well, just to analyze what happened in our system. If you haven't subscribed my channel yet, then please hit the subscribe button down below, give me the like, write the comment, and now we are going straight into the video. All right, guys, now we are once again in our movies application project that we were building throughout my last videos on this channel. If you would like just to get this repository, uh, the link is down below in the description uh, into my GitHub that you can clone this repository and just and set up this logging on your own. So we have to install a couple of the Nugget packages in order to set up properly the seri log and also the syncs to the SQLite database. So we would like to start with that. We have to open up the Nugget, Nugget Manager and we have to write settings configuration so it will be the first one to download the next one will be called serilog dot extensions dot hosting and the last one will be called serilog dot syncs to the SQL light I'll also add this nugget package. And now we have to make sure what we actually would like to achieve. Uh, if we would like to add the seri log as the additional logger provider into our application, or just to set up the seri log as the only one logger provider in our app. So we have to write var logger equals new logger configuration then read from configuration and then builder dot configuration and we'll also use the method to create logger create logger and then we have to pass to our builder dot logging and the add seri log and we have to pass this logger in that case the seri log will be will be created and added as the additional logger provider because so far we have our default logging provider from the microsoft and we'll have another one just to uh, add the logs to the database to the sqlite database if you would like to add the seri log as the only one logger provider you have to you have to type builder dot post dot use seri log and in here we have to have to set up in that manner so the configuration dot read from as before dot configuration will be the context dot configuration and actually that's it so in this kind of configuration you'll have only the seri log and you'll have this default microsoft logger provider it will be omitted and it will not be used at all. So I will just comment out this approach. I will use this as an additional provider. And we have to go to the app settings JSON file and we have to set up 
our configuration related to the serilog. So I will just write additional section. It will be called serilog. We have to open up JSON and we have to pass using. And in this using, we will use serilog.syncs.sqlite. As we have added this nugget package, then we'll write minimum level. And the minimum level we can use at first as the default, it will be it will be information. So we'll lock actually more or less everything that will be the information for us, so not like the different log level called verbose or debug, it will be something a little bit higher. We have to give the comma and then the most important part here is just to where we would like to write those logs. And here we can actually use many of uh, the destinations, it could be the console, it could be, uh, it could be the event viewer or another database or the application insights in Azure. So uh, it depends on you. In that video, we would like only to use the SQLite. So I'll just write the name and the name will be the SQLite. Lite. And then in the args, the arguments, we have to pass the SQLite, SQLite db path, where we have our database stored, our SQL database stored. We have this database here, so we have just to copy, copy the path, and it will be the absolute path that we can copy there. We can specify also the table name. By default, this, it's called logs, but we would like just to create the table called movies logs only related to our app. And then we can use the auto create SQL table. And this is the Boolean, so we would like just to create that SQL table if it will not exist in our database. And then we can use the store time stamp in UTC. And of course, we would like to store that timestamp just to have the reflection when this log actually was created. I'll run our app and we'll check if everything was created properly. All right, so we can go to our database and check. All right, as you see, our movies logs table was created and the information level logs were also created. We have no exceptions at all, but we have the rendered message, what actually happened, also the properties, but we can check how it will look like when we'll have some kind of the exception. So uh, I modified the method just to delete the movie based on the ID to throw the null reference exception. So we'll try it out, we'll just Type 4 as the ID, and as you see, we have internal server error. It was wrapped by our exception handler that we have set up in uh, my crude uh, video. So it was that very long video how to create that kind of the application. And we can check in our movies logs table where it's our exception. Okay, as you see, we have the error as the level and we have the no reference exception. We have the whole stack trace. So we can check, so we can check what actually happened. 
and we have the rendered message. So everything actually is stored. We have the event ID, unhandled exception. What was the request path? Also the connection ID. So everything is stored properly. And if you would like just to change the log level uh, as the minimum one, just not to log those informations uh, and also warnings, but only the errors and the fatals, then you have just to go to the upsetting JSON file and change this accordingly. That as you see here, the default one, just to change for the errors. And as you see here, and everything was used uh, additionally uh, on the top of that default logger provider from the Microsoft. And when we'll go to our program CS and we'll actually not use this in that manner, but we use the Serilog as the only one logger provider, then we'll see that nothing will be locked here in our console. So I'll just run once again our app. And as you see, I'll try it out once again, write five. And as you see, we have nothing there. So the Serilog is the only one logger provider now. And of course, in our database, we can see that once again, we have that new reference exception, but we don't have anything over there. So Serilog now is the only one logger provider. All right, guys, so that's the end of this video. I hope that your database is happy with the logs that all of them were inserted into the specific logs table from Serilog. Uh, if you haven't subscribed my channel yet, then please do so. Give me the like, write the comment and see you in the next one.